Today, I'd like to do a piece on total isolation confinement, what it does to the mind. I heard that the longest somebody did on isolation confinement was 30 years. My first experience with isolation confinement was in Johnson County, right outside of Fort Worth. I was taken there on a case and I was uh, went there and the officer asked me if I have any tattoos. And I told him I had some and he didn't like the way I talked. So he put me in the shoe, which is isolated. That was one of my first times going to isolation confinement in federal prison, which is, is one bed, one sink, one toilet. And uh, I was there for a few weeks before they extradited me to Denver, Colorado, which I was in a jail unit for a month or two and got into it with some guys over the phone. And they put me in the shoe in the Inglewood medium low, I think that's what it was. And while I was there, I didn't understand about the the seriousness of being in the shoe at that particular time. And I was there and they put me in the shoe in the hole. And while I was in the hole, I was uh, there for uh, a few months. And while I was there, this is when the first time I seen isolation confinement up close. And I didn't know nothing about a thing called designated segregation where they take all your stuff and they discipline you for being in the hole from what you, the infractions you had. So I was there and it had, was two bunks in that particular hole. And I had never really been in a hole that big and they bring the food to the door. They bring your mail to the door, no TV. I think I ended up buying a radio and uh, I was there for six or seven months, and then they wouldn't let me back to the complex, so I had to stay there for nine months. And from there, they took me out of there, and they sent me to back to Johnson County, which was Fort Worth, was just building a jail unit. And the jail unit was uh, being built, so they still had us in Johnson County. And that's, this time, they put me back in the population. And when they got finished with the actual jail unit in Fort Worth, I was, we was one of the first 10 that was there. And they put me in the uh, jail unit for a while. And some other guy came and said he was, didn't want the country of being around black. So they put me in the hole coming from a visit. For the rest of my time at Fort Worth FCI, I stayed in that hole for another nine months. And I didn't even understand the validity of what the whole does to your mind. And I used to go to rec once hour a day, five days a week. They feed you in your cell, you work out in your cell, you do everything in your cell, and they take you out maybe to take a shower. But while I was there, I learned that you have to have a strong mind and you can't uh, let outside influences, girlfriends, different things get into your mind because the, the shoe is built to discipline you. But I wasn't being disciplined, I was just being racial profile. But from there, they sent me to Terry Hutt, Indiana, which I was in the hole there too, which was a, a eight, nine months. I did nine months in the shoe. First, I was in a unit with the, with the Cubans and they had big rats used to come through the cell at night. And then I ended up going to the shoe because I was getting transferred. And I used to talk to some of the guys on the compound from the rec yard. And that was a different kind of place to shoe for me because I, I didn't know that I was going to be being in the shoe. Every prison I pretty much went to, I ended up being in the shoe. And then from uh, Terry Hutt, they sent me to at USP Atlanta, which I was in the hole again. And in that hole, it was kind of different because it, they had, it was a newer hole. And they had a welded barbed wire on the uh, front of the, the window so nobody could bust the windows out and everything like that. But this hole was way different because it was the cells was bigger and you had the showers in the cell. This was the first time I uh, experienced 
being in a hole with the shower inside the cell. So now you really don't get to come out the cell. And from Atlanta, I went to Leavenworth. Now, Leavenworth have the most dangerous, most stringent hole in the United States because inside the hole, they have a wall inside the wall in the hole. And you can't talk to nobody and you can't see nobody but the people that bring you the food and it's real uh, dramatic and it's real isolated. And from there, they sent me to Lompoc, which I was in another hole with bars on it. Kind of a little bit different way the bars was set up in that particular place. And while I was there, I went to Pollock, which is Pollock is a little different. It has doors with electric doors and the doors can be open. People can manipulate the doors and, and uh, attack you if that's what it was. So I ended up being in a hole in Pollock. And when I left Pollock, I went to Atwater, which I didn't experience the hole because I didn't uh, get into any trouble there. But when I went to Victorville, I was there for 15 years. And right before I got ready to leave that particular prison, they sent me to the two and they put me in a hole for nine months. And one thing about Victorville Hole is no windows. They got the windows painted so you can't see anything. And it's real, real dramatic because you have uh, no mirrors, you have uh, showers, you have uh, no cracks on the door so you can't slide anything from back and forth. So the only thing you hear is people talking and you can see people, but you can't look out the window and see humans or uh, the participation on the yard or anything like that. So it's real isolated. And while I was there, I... Uh, read a lot of books, but this hole was kind of different because you can talk to the vent and talk to some kind of civilization. But a lot of people don't know that the shoe and the program, the mind plays games on you and you would never want to be able to, never want to go to the shoe for anything that would be, uh, get you isolated. Now I see why uh, Florence, uh, Maxim Unit, they have all the big guys there for 24 hour lockdown. I think the, uh, the cage, the wreck cage, come to the back of the cell and they be able to get wrecked. But I know these guys is locked down for 24 hours a day. Larry Hoover and all of these guys, uh, the, the bombers, everybody is in that place. It's built underground, so you like in a grave, underground, in the grave. And a lot of times, man, when you see these guys that I think it was a guy that was in Angola for 30 years, that did 30 years in the shoe and uh, this was like cruel and unusual punishment in the Supreme Court. It's supposed to have made a ruling where you can't be in a shoe so uh, so long. And I think Obama's made it where you couldn't be in a shoe so long for transfer. But I know that these big warehouses, shoe programs, they're real dangerous. And when your family come home, you don't know if they're schizophrenic. You don't know if they, they, they uh, hear voices. You don't know if they got PTSD. You don't know if they bipolar and you got to really pay attention on how much time your family do in these holes because when they come home, they be uh, what you call introverts. They be alone. They be silent. They've been reading all these books and they've been doing things. And uh, you got to really pay attention to family members that be in the hole and in the hole for these all of these years and all of this time. And uh, it would drive a person mad, it would drive a person crazy, but you really, really, really got to listen. Look at your family when they call, you get one phone call uh, once a month, and you really got to understand that these shoe programs all around this country is uh, real dangerous, and you're in a box the size of a bathroom, and you really don't have an opportunity to do a lot of stuff, especially if it's a racial issue, but I've never really been to the state, so I don't really know the validity of being into the shoe and the state programs, but I do know that it's real dangerous and you got to pay attention to this stuff. And so when your family member come home and you see there's something wrong with them, you got to get him some help because these, these, it says that a man wasn't built to be alone and they put you in these holes. Sometimes they four point you, sometimes they put you in there for, they say he was bringing drugs into prison or different things like that, but they isolate you. Sometimes you have a celly, but a lot of times you don't. This is on isolation confinement in America.
pay attention. 